Please begin. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. I am Dr. Kumbhati, Head of Biomedical Engineering Department, Parallel Institute of Technology, Parallel University. So today we have with us Dr. Poonam Mondal, Campus Administrator at the Canadian College of Business, Science and Technology, Toronto, Canada. And ma'am will present a webinar on higher education in biomedical engineering opportunities in India as well as abroad. So for audience, if you have any queries, any questions regarding the webinar, then you can directly uh, give your queries on a given WhatsApp number or given email ID. We will uh, discuss the discuss your queries or questions at the end of the session. Okay. So, without taking too much time, I will hand over today's session to Dr. Poonam. Madam, please, you can continue your presentation. Thank you, Dimple Ma'am, for your introduction. I, I really feel uh, fortunate to have uh, the opportunity to deliver this webinar today for Paral University Biomedical students. So, it, I was associated with Paral University for three years. Last year, 2019, I left um, in August, so it's I, it doesn't seem like it's been a year also. And um, I was heading the same department, and so um, I feel very good that right now Dimple Nam is heading it very nicely. So thank you, ma'am, again. So uh, today I am here to share my experience for higher education and what opportunities you have in India and in abroad. So right now I am in Toronto, um, which is in Canada, and I'm working as campus administrator in uh, college, the Indian College of Business Science and Technology. We have four campuses here in Ontario. I'm the campus admin for one of the um, campuses. So the first thing which comes in our mind when we talk about higher education at this level because I understand what um, you are going through maybe the final year students or, or um, the third year students like what will we do after that and in this pandemic situation I know it's really tough like what will happen to our career because you are all biomedical going to be biomedical engineers what's going to happen to you so the questions I just listed two questions which came into my mind thinking like making me like thinking that what you guys can be um, assuming. So is it worth it? Will higher education increase my chances of getting a job? Will I get a job after BTEC? Is it compulsory to do higher education to get a job? Or should I continue with this stream of biomedical? Or should I change my stream? If I uh, choose to do uh, higher study, should I do MS, MTech, or MSc? And what is the difference between these three? They are all master degrees in biomedical. And finally, if I decide to do higher education, where should I pursue it? Should I go to abroad or should I continue to India? And if I go to abroad, where do I go? There are so many uh, options. The world is, you know, you have so many options. And finally, how does the pandemic situation affect studies abroad? And also, yeah, I forgot, is one of, the, uh, if I can afford my education or not. Because already our parents are uh, spending money for the engineering degree you are uh, having. So will will they be able to afford or, or could you afford it for so? so these are the questions which you might be in mind. So let me um, clear some of them for you. And if you have still more questions, you can get back to me for sure. So higher education uh, for I'm not talking about other streams, it's purely for biomedical. If and only if you are passionate about academics and you want to stay in India, definitely go for higher studies. If you want to be a if you want to be in academics or research, then you have to do a higher education. Only bachelor's degree degree won't help in that. 
if you think that you are uh, you only want to do job after this degree and you don't want to study any further or you think oh my god i have studied so many subjects already i don't want to continue you don't have to btec biomedical will give you that chance to get your uh, job after so after a uh, bachelor's in biomedical you will surely get a job anywhere in the world in india in abroad anywhere and this pandemic situation has actually helped biomedical stream to be very honest there is more demand of people working in the medical industry and so it's it's great uh, opportunity for biomedical engineers so now it is whoever asked me what, what will i what do i join and after 12th class or grade 12 so i always say biomedical if you're going for engineering biomedical is definitely a very good choice for you then should i continue with biomedical so throughout this four years of study i don't know which year students you are maybe you are like from all years so do you feel passion about biomedical stream do you connect yourself with it do you think that you can continue with this stream life long or do you think oh my god this uh, medical equipment this industry is not my cup of tea so that's up to you to decide if you think that okay i don't want to continue you can definitely change your stream after biomedical do any anything man you can do mba you can do business administration use your but don't make this degree based use your degree in btech biomedical and just be administrator in a hospital okay so just use this degree and you can change your stream for sure then should you do ms mtech or ms so these are all masters degrees mtech is specifically for like it it is it relates more to technical okay it's a btech and mtech bachelor's in technology and masters in technology so it uh, if you are doing a mtech degree it will correspond more to the technical side if you are doing ms or msc then you are more oriented towards the research side so then again it's your take but remember mtech if you are doing uh, abroad so in some countries they do have engineering license so you might have to take a test for getting that license so keep that in mind that's why most students who uh, pursue higher education in biomedical go for ms not for mtech because you might not clear the exam or it may, there may be some hurdles whatever and you have to renew this uh, license exams every year there is a fee uh, taken by the government in uh, foreign countries for renewal of your license for this engineering uh, profession will doing higher education increase my job chance or salary in india i would say not so much only again only if you want to stay in academics or research you do higher education in india otherwise no. but if you are talking about abroad surely higher education increases the uh, salary like uh greatly so if you uh, if you are uh, if you want to pursue higher education do come abroad so where in abroad that i'll discuss in my further slides uh most popular countries where students choose to go for their higher education and will you be able to afford your education yes you can so there are several educational loans which you can take and it's now now it is education has become, i wouldn't say it's affordable but it's um ease ease of, of education i would say within reach so whenever you go to this abroad country the foreign countries their currency is higher than our indian currency if i talk about indian students i also know that we have many uh, uh, students from Bangla, uh, bangladesh nepal africa in our college so for them also so the currency of these Uh, nations which are going they are first world nations so their currency is higher and definitely you can work part time in india we don't have such options for working part time and doing education that's not a popular culture yet but in foreign countries yeah it is so uh, because i'm li- i'm in toronto canada and i know like all the students coming here uh, they do part time job and they are actually for the only reason that they are um uh, studying and they are 
uh, paying for their education and yeah man so what else you want right so that's that's a great thing when you are able to afford your own education and how does the pandemic situation affect so i it's it's been difficult and universities have uh, seen a low cut for students because uh, there was no you know flights were banned and people wouldn't come but uh, from past one or two months so many people have gone to different countries with precaution of course i know one of your senior um, adil khayu uh, went to arizona university uh, in august or september i believe so he flew there yeah and he has started his course so how does pandemic situation affects i would say that many universities have uh, given you the chance to study online so for example if you just say that you don't feel if coming to uh, so the university gives you a chance to study online for at least 50% of your course okay and that that's great i would say because you don't have to spend anything you can give your you know you can sit and take online lectures and for rest 50% of the course you can come to that country so that that's also a good option i also know that um, one of your seniors from other department not from biomedical uh, he is planning to come to canada and he is going to come in january in date so he was also given a chance for online education like online classes but he opted to come here instead and because there there are so many practical involved so it's better to be in hand so and here we have all the precautions in place so i would say it's safe to safe to study and how long will you do sit at home so we have to accept the situation and go on then what are the higher studies options in india so i have listed some of the courses which i found are now in demand in india me is master of engineering in biomedical engineering then mtech in the same stream then you can also choose biomedical signal processing and instrumentation of course it depends on the interest you have then biomedical instrumentation if you specifically want to pursue further in the instrumentation then masters in instrumentation uh, can be done then as i said you can change your stream a bit and you can do uh, master of business administration in hospital management healthcare management or hospital and health systems management you can also do a diploma in post uh, it's called a post graduate diploma in biomedical science and basic clinical research so uh, by this you can uh, you know move into your the research areas so uh, these are the most popular options i found in uh, people are pursuing nowadays in india so how to go for higher studies in india i suppose you guys already know this but still i'll, I'll like to put some light on it from 2020 20 the exam of gate has uh, has been on for biomedical engineering before that biomedical engineers used to give exam for instrumentation control or electronics and of course they didn't score good because of course they didn't study instrumentation for four years right so how would they be able to clear so from 2020 we have gate biomedical for biomedical engineering students and i don't know if you keep track but or if anybody of you gave gate this this year I, i'm not aware of that but this time the score was really very low it was just 41 and not more than 2500 students gave this exam so i would say competition is also less right now for the gate exam so gate is an exam which allows you to and gives it gives you access for higher education in all the iits iisc that's indian institute of sciences so if you are going to have a higher stu- a higher education in india you should definitely get it from one of the best institutes so gate will open that gate for you and uh, surely uh, uh, you can have the direct exam of college and in universities just keep on checking uh, the universities which you are interested in and just see their direct examination or criteria for um admission so yeah these are the ways where how india is taking admission then comes higher studies in abroad so now when you choose higher studies in abroad you have a ton of choices 
and branches to choose starting from bioinformatics bioengineering and nano systems this is like huge so nano systems is uh, the main research focus by, from all the developed countries so bioengineering and nano systems is a great uh, choice for higher studies emergency medicine medical ultrasound so medical ultrasound is one of the you know not much people do this course but once you do i would say you're you're uh, surely get a um, good paycheck job within like while you are studying because it's so much in demand and you don't have to do much you just have to analyze the ultrasounds and yeah it's it's i would say a great uh, profile who doesn't want to study so much and it only focuses on the uh, ultrasounds and then medical microbiology genetics neurosciences so two of your uh, seniors they are uh, going to germany and they already got their um, approvals and everything so i uh, i also happen to give them recommendations for this and they are uh, going to study new uh, mas masters in neurosciences in germany so yeah you can also if you are interested of course then you can do a uh, masters in biosignals and systems medical devices biomechanics uh, biomaterials and many more uh, whenever you're going to search you you will find a ton of choices so now uh, i am in contact with many of you i, I don't know how many, how many students are in contact they uh, ask me sometimes what, what what branch should i choose where should i go but i cannot choose that for you right so that you have to think while doing your education for this four years you have exposure of all these subjects maybe a little if not uh, too much maybe you got a topic or you you heard somewhere about it so whatever interests you in this age no just search about it what is it and see if that that interests you more if if yes then why not go for it just search the scope and the place you want to pursue and you can you can go ahead so since i am in canada <coughs> i'm sorry i will um, uh, speak about what's the scenario in canada so this this is, is uh, the map of canada and uh, we have 10 provinces provinces are like states so uh, we have 10 provinces i live in ontario that is this yellow colored portion you can see and i live in ontario toronto toronto is the financial capital of canada so most of the healthcare industries pharmaceutical industries are here so if you are coming to canada you might end up doing a job somewhere near toronto and then we have a biotech huge biotech industry that's in vancouver vancouver is in british columbia and if you happen to do something related to research you might end up going to quebec quebec is this pink colored portion huge only problem with quebec not problem but only issue with quebec is that uh, french is required so you need to uh, know a little french or maybe you go there and learn but french is a requirement for living in quebec you can't even buy a coffee without knowing french so this is about uh, canada so now i'll just describe how the education system in north america works so north america is india uh, sorry canada and us so we have both publicly funded and private schools the major uh, hierarchy is such that we have community colleges or technical institutes then we have career colleges career colleges are mostly private colleges which are uh, which mostly give uh, courses after which you can directly land a job so these are also called vocational colleges then language schools because these countries have immigrants and uh, people from all over the world so and they speak different languages so just to keep everyone on the same page we have language schools so and because all countries are not english speaking countries right then we have universities of course canada has a um, ma major big uh, universities impacting doing lot of research healthcare a lot of lot is, lot of research is going on in universities and then we have university colleges so this is how how it works in north america community colleges are um they come in a level lower than the university colleges but they are more affordable if i talk about the tuition fee they are more affordable so many students 
opt for community colleges or technical institutes uh, for their higher studies because that is more affordable for them than the university. University fees is normally uh, higher than community colleges. So I have just listed uh, top five universities in Canada. Number one is University of Toronto, then University of British Columbia, McGill University, McMaster University, and University of Alberta. And I have also listed the fees here. So these uh, universities offer master's degree of 1.5 or 2 years. They offer master of engineering or master of applied science in biomedical engineering or whatever the course you choose. Now how to apply for these universities. So all the international applicants around the world can apply directly through the websites uh, the, these universities have they have uh, they they keep on posting the registration dates and when is the next uh, admission dates are for example right now if you open any university they will say january uh, 2021 is the next starting date just now they have filled the september or the fall intake so they have just filled the september intake so now right now all universities are offering january intake so some universities may have direct application portal some may have a different sort of, sort of form to fill and send you so that depends on the university but definitely you can get everything online so masters in biomedical engineering what what are the admission requirements so first and foremost you need to require transcripts so transcripts are proof that you have completed a basic education bachelor's degree in biomedical so you can get that from your university office and get it um um uh, sealed sealed or signed by your hod or officials then you need letter of reference now letter of reference or lors are the most important when you are talking about uh, higher studies because they they seal the deal you will require minimum two or three for most of the universities for this course and uh, you can get it from your teachers or principal or people you know like your uh, advisors or faculty members so they they will write a recommendation for you that okay um this student studied for, uh, with me for three years and he's she was he or she was very good at uh bioinformatics or processing and uh, she did this or this project and i feel she is a very strong candidate for master's degree in biomedical engineering and she loves to do this projects and uh, good in teamwork you know all praises that you are a versatile member for their college so this is what an lor um, is all about and you can find online also samples and just make sure to write a good letter of reference because this really is important and then the universities will uh, send counter questions to the person you gave the mail for example, if you uh, give your principal source a um, letter of recommendation, they will send a counter email to the principal uh, saying that, okay, what is the student with you? Uh, how, how is the student doing? And some sort of question. So that's important that the person responds. Otherwise, it, it is void. So just make sure you know the person you're giving, taking the letter of reference, and he or she will help you till you get the admission. And then statement of purpose or intent statement of purpose or intent is normally for university applications i don't think it is required for technical institutes so for university applications you require uh, it's sort of an intent why you want to pursue higher studies like what is your passion what drives you to pursue this so you have to be really open and speak speak about it like why why do you want to study further you can say you want a change in healthcare field and you are you have always been passionate about it so just put good good and passionate and creating words in it so that they feel that okay this candidate is someone we want to look for and then uh resume so you, you have to give a resume that that's that's normal you know then proof of language proficiency so uh, of course uh, all this uh, western countries or um, abroad countries where you will be going they will need a uh, language proficiency it may be TOEFL or IELTS for most of it 
so you have to give academic IELTS. So uh, some of you might know, but some for those who don't know, we have two types of IELTS: general and academic. So for admission require uh, admission uh, things, you you need an academic IELTS. So this is I've just listed the universities and how much score they minimum want. They minimum want at least six point five or seven in IELTS. So mostly IELTS is easy, easiest exam if you talk about English proficiency. So that's why most of the students go for IELTS. Okay, so now what, what after your studies? So uh, I have a small video about postgraduate work permit. I'm going to play for you. Okay, so uh, that was about postgraduate work permit. I'll come come on that in a minute. So I've just listed salary of biomedical engineers abroad and have selected five countries for that: Canada, U.S., Australia, U.K., and Germany. And these are all in U.S. dollars. So you can see among all this country, U.S. is the highest. That's almost a, a lakh USD per year, and Canada is the lowest. It's only 58,000 and it can be up to 90,000 after you do a higher education. So after your MS. So in, you can see Germany is all the good option for this. And the one advantage with Germany is that there is no tuition fee in Germany. So you have to just give living uh, living allowance and your food recommendation things. But uh, of course you have to learn German for Germany as, as well. But it's a good option because there is no tuition fee there. So, despite of Canada being of Canada offering lower salary than other countries, I'll still pitch for Canada. Not because I'm living here. I'll just tell you uh, what are the advantages of coming here and why. Why still most of the students come to like uh, we have a like huge uh, student crowd who prefer Canada for their higher educations. 
so i'll pitch for us versus canada so first and foremost after completing your studies you will not be able like you will not be able to stay and work in us because as soon as you complete your studies there it's it's very difficult to get a work visa there so the us immigration system is not very well equipped for um you know taking new new grads even the people who are uh, who have studied in us university universities find it difficult to be settled there the cost of education which is of course a major factor in canada is uh, one third of what will be in us so and after the uh, course you will get canadian citizenship in few years which is uh, almost like impossible in us us citizenship is really difficult to get the healthcare industry is huge in canada because canada has an aging population most of the people are are in their uh, are older than 50 as per as per our survey here so a large uh, and nowadays a large number of american firms are setting up their um, canadian presence so they are shifting their base from us to canada because it's very easy to employ somebody in canada instead of us and the foreign workers even if they are talented they cannot stay in us and work for a longer time so that that's why canada is more preferred by these firms because they want to reach every every company wants to retain the workers and it's easier to settle in canada than us although the us has a huge job market the recent years of recession and you know what happened in this pandemic so it's it's been difficult for us canada also has suffered much but i would say on relatively smaller scale so what are what are some pros for canada so we have a wide availability of discipline specific scholarship so i just told you the cost of different programs if you go to the website of each university they offer certain scholarships if you get them it's it's great they have very good co-op programs so co-op programs are like internships you call in india they are called internships but they are paid internship you get paid for doing the internship and most of the students get absorbed in the same companies they were doing co-op so it's a great opportunity for that it's comparatively easier to pursue a part time job in canada and because we, we our uh, study permit is very flexible so it's it's actually a student welcoming country we have immigrants from almost every country in the world so any uh, people from all the races culture religion are equally accepted so it's that's very good and then we have a excellent healthcare policy uh, uh, you don't have to healthcare and education up till 12th grade are free so you don't have to pay anything for your med you don't have your medical bills to pay and up to 12th grade you can study for free so these are uh, these before ending i'll just uh, say if you are doing a course and you choose to come in canada uh, for a post graduate course of one year you get permit for uh, one year but if you do a course for one and a half or two year you get a work permit for three years and within these three years you can apply for your permanent resident in canada and you can you can settle up so you don't want to go abroad just to study just make up your mind which country you want to go i told you the top countries australia uk germany us and canada for biomedical industry so just choose the country wisely and think of settling down there you don't want to just roam around countries so of course that's that's again your call to take but that would be my suggestion to you so i thank everyone who has uh, who is attending the webinar and these are some memories i had in paru university i thought i'll put it up these are some stu the students and the projects we did in the laboratory and then uh, some good times shared so uh, if you have any questions i'm very happy to answer them i um, make um, vlogs in youtube so you can uh, subscribe my channel that is kapu holly and you can also follow me on instagram for uh, the journey i'm having here in canada so any questions are welcome
Okay, ma'am, thank you for such an amazing webinar. Uh, I have received two, two, three questions from the student side. First question is, what type of research facilities are available at Canada? Okay. So, research as in general, general any research, biomedical? Yes, yes it's a biomedical research. So, Canada, as it, uh, as I said, is a healthcare pioneer. So, uh, and the healthcare is, is free here. So, you can, you can understand if the healthcare is free here, they have to be at par because they are giving it free of cost. So, whatever facilities, uh, whatever research is done, it's, it's cutting it. So, uh, Canada has all the latest equipment. Even, you know, for COVID, they have all the, uh, the vaccine will come. We all know, we all are waiting. But Canada has already procured all the uh, all other requirements for the vaccine. So uh, for all the uh, the equipments are latest and all the research. What, what do you want about uh, equipment? So we, they have all the latest equipments. If you want to know more about the research fields. So Canada is working a lot on cancer research and in biomedical specifically, biomaterials and nanomaterials. They, a lot is going on uh, on research front. Can I have other questions, ma'am? Hello. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, second question is, what kinds of jobs are available for the BME graduate? So, as I said, uh, a biomedical professional here can do uh instrumentation jobs and then as i as i mentioned ultrasound is, is very good here emergency medicine is very 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 promising because we have urgent care facilities so they always need uh, biomedical beds so and of course hospital facilities there we have long-term care here so long-term cares are for senior people uh, um so here the, it's like old age homes in India. So it's called long term care here. So they also need biomedical bags. So, yeah, there's. Uh, and of course, in manufacturing units, they need biomedical uh, bags, or they always need biomedical bags. Um, for, even for manufacturing, from starting manufacturing to a catheter to a big, big instrument, everywhere you will need a biomedical instrument. Okay, next question from the Malon. Uh, mm -hmm. The question is, I have gotten a master place in UK to study orthopedics and rehabilitation engineering. Is it a good field or rather course to pursue or it's a too general? No, it's, it's uh, hi Malon. I um, keep seeing your messages and awesome donuts you are making now. At this. So <laughs> it's a very so it's uh, it's orthopedic is a very good field. So um, I, I don't know which university you got into, but uh, it's good. And education in UK is also good. Just, uh, the only thing in UK is that after your particular education, you uh, have to maybe move to other countries. They don't allow generally students after they complete their education. So it was, um, Make your priorities, like what decide for yourself. Otherwise, orthopedics is a good thing to do masters. Okay. Uh, another question from Yas, fifth semester. Yas Salraja. Uh, what about Germany versus Canada in relation to biomedical engineering for the higher studies? Uh, okay. Uh, is the question about job money? Uh, for higher studies. Okay, I didn't get it. Question about, is, uh, 
uh, what about germany versus canada in relation to I means uh, in which country yes will get the better things related to our engineering so um i would suggest germany education fee is a huge amount so the, uh, the and education in germany is also at par and after you complete your degree the job prospects are also good although i'm not sure about what is the uh, if you want to continue living in germany or do you want to stay so and you have to of course learn german if you're planning for germany you have to learn basic german in india you have to show them that you know some german and then you can study other advanced german in germany but uh, just give your priority that whether you want to continue staying in uh, germany after your education or you want to shift somewhere else and you can still be an option be my option over canada for uh, biomedical okay another question is for getting better job uh, which program we should go post graduation pg diploma or masters of engineering post graduation pg diploma okay so um masters when i talk about masters in bio uh, biomedical engineering then you are just uh, like continuing your biomedical engineering in your the post graduate diploma i talk about they were in uh, in a more generalized field this is you want to stay in engineering if you want to stay in engineering field then you go for uh engineering if you do not want to continue in engineering and go to a general administration uh, part then you do a post graduate diploma but if you are doing a post graduate diploma in clinical research then you go to research so depending on in what subject you are doing uh, the higher study that will decide your job prospect okay the another question is uh, ma'am can you tell me about the major and minor another discipline of biomedical okay major and minor another so as i showed that there are many branches to choose so these are actually uh, you can choose if okay. if you are doing major in biomedical engineering in general you can do a minor in maybe um nano system uh, that is micro systems which is also a part of biomedical so you can choose any of uh, this thing is diversity is not of certain yeah colleges but in abroad they have so much of uh, branches in this system so you have you can choose maybe genetics with biomedical so there is nothing called which is better or which is not depends on your interest for example i tell you okay you do genetics but you are not good, good in uh, memorizing genetic codes then it's a waste right so you decide what um, compels you and which subject interests you if it's maybe it's biomedical signaling so go for a minor in biomedical signaling but keep your major biomedical engineering so that that uh, gives you a broad scope for applying for jobs and getting into uh, different places okay uh, another question from matthew uh, the question is just like gate is for india to apply for higher studies in canada do i have to write an exam hi matthew uh, god is good okay uh, yeah. so for um, higher like in india we have this we don't have uh, anything such for particular there is no particular college exam they just need they have your transcript that you have studied four years of like education in biomedical engineering that's enough for them they only need a ielts exam or toefl exam mostly students give ielts because that's the easiest so for uh, for so they give um ielts and you will need minimum score of 6.5 or 7 for university or colleges and that that's the only language exam so that is it and even Uh, some colleges um i believe they will even ex- are not in canada maybe in other countries they can accept you without um the minimum as requirement because you have you have to show the proof that you have studied 
four years in English medium uh, college. So like you have studied your you have completed your degree in English. A four year biomedical degree was in English. So if you have and our college, uh, the Paral University, they give this in writing that I know that okay, this you was pursued in English, so you don't have to uh, give us this, uh, give IELTS also for some universities. Okay. Uh, one question from Anisha, third semester. Uh, the question is, I want to do further studies in genetic engineering. Which country would be the best? Hi, Anisha. I would say US if you just want to study. And But I'm not sure. If you have some relatives there, great. And um, because that helps you to settle up there after your education. So uh, for genetic engineering, only for the study, I would say uh, US is doing the best. They are doing most research and you can do all, all type of genetic engineering is basically not engineering. It's actually a research field, complete research field. And if you go to US, you'll get the most opportunity. Like you can make most of your degree and the job market and every opportunity that you need. Okay, ma'am. Uh, last question is, ma'am, what about imaging and image processing for doing Appentex in future scope? Okay. So, as, so image processing, I would say it's it's a it's it's a narrow thing because you are not the only person doing this. Uh, people who have studied instrumentation engineering, they are also going to pursue it. People who are doing electronics. They are also going to pursue it. Even I, I have seen people who have done electrical engineering, they, sh they go into image processing. So you don't want so many different backgrounds in your competition when you're doing something. So you may don't go for just image processing, choose a wider, a wider uh, field. Don't be so specific. If you're so very much interested in this, just take a minor. So just major in something else and just take an electric. Okay, uh, last question from the Neera side. Uh, after MTech, how may uh, how may we apply for the jobs in abroad or in India? Okay, so after MTech in India, you can so job application nowadays it's global everywhere. You even sitting in Canada, we are applying job in the same way you use in India. So uh, indeed, I found it's very good. And there all the job portals in India, there is Nokia.com, and so all job portals do help. But what, uh, but I would say LinkedIn is what uh, counts because others are have been traditional. So um, there are hundreds of um, resumes which come to the HR, and they are there. Okay, but in LinkedIn, you can directly up to approach people. So. so just make good connections in LinkedIn. LinkedIn it's not like you can, and there's a, I don't know if you know, uh, but there's a job search in LinkedIn, job posts on LinkedIn as well. All the good companies are posting their jobs posts on LinkedIn and then on other job posts. So it's a very good platform. You can connect with the HR, you can see what the employees in the company are calling for and if you are a good fit for the company. So uh, LinkedIn is a great platform. And um, yes, that's as well. Um, LinkedIn is global and it's, it, it is the best for job application anywhere. Okay. Uh, the last question is uh, how many credits are required to be postgraduate? Because some of the foreign country may offer one year master's program and some are two years master program. So what is the difference between them? So for biomedical, uh, the duration for one year it will be a diploma. It won't be a degree. Uh, the duration will be 1.5 uh, uh, years or two years uh, for for all these degrees, and uh, it, it may be with with a co uh, or with within maybe 1.5 years is education and six months of internship or or or, or it's included in that. 
So uh, number of credits depends on the university. Each university has a different criteria. So uh, we cannot generalize uh, any any time that which university have, how much credits are required because like in India we have a um, CG, uh, CGPA system. We have a credit of ten. Here in Canada we call it GPA. So it's um, so it's three four GPA. So it's we cannot um, generalize the credit requirements. If whichever university you are looking for, just go on their website and see the credit details. It's it's everything is online. You can get easily your hands on. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. It look it's look like we have covered all of our questions. Uh, so, ma'am, is there anything else you wanted to cover uh, before a wrap up? Any suggestions for the students? Um, thank you for all the, all the good questions I uh, got. And a suggestion is like just in this four years, this is your time and age to develop passion of something. So, with your studies, just connect with some subject or connect with something you really want to carry forward because uh, it's not that all sub like just don't burden yourself just and in this uh, pandemic situation i know that you all are doing online classes and it's difficult and everything just follow some passion that that will be a lifelong thing for you so i'll just say stay safe and uh, whoever is coming to canada you can contact me and you're welcome here and i uh, whatever help you need from my site Dimple ma'am has my email address. Many of you have my contact already. So you can and do follow me on YouTube for my latest uh, <laughs> journey videos and on Instagram for daily updates of Canada. <laughs> that, that's it. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you being over here. Thanks to Parul University for giving me such an opportunity to host such a webinar. Thank you, ma'am to give Thank us you, a, your auspicious time for us. <laughs> Thanks again for joining us today. We will see you next time. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Stay safe.